Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show you one or two quick examples of how to use or uh, apply long division algebraically to questions. We're going to use the same, I suppose, process as you would have done in primary school with long division with numbers, um, but it just looks maybe a slight bit more complicated because we're dealing with algebra. So let's get straight into this question. So this is probably how it's going to come up on the junior cert. So the first thing you need to remember is that you want to make it look like this. So you put the thing that's dividing into the larger polynomial um, on the outside, and then we've got a cubed minus 6a squared minus 12a plus 17. One thing to note, which I'll be coming back to in a few minutes, is look at how the terms are written. We've got the a cubed, then an a squared, then an a, and then a number by itself. They should always be in that order when we're doing long division like this, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so the way I teach it is, we look to the first term here, which is a, and we look to the first term inside our um, division symbol, and we say to ourselves, what do you divide, or how much times does a divide into a cubed? Or another way of thinking about it is, what do I multiply a by to get a cubed? And the answer is a squared. So that answer always goes up on the top. Step two is you take your answer and you multiply it by both of these terms. So a squared by a gives you a cubed, and if you've done it properly, you should always get the same number or terms above and below. And a squared multiplied by minus one gives you minus a squared. The next step is you change the signs on both of the terms that you've just written down. So that's going to change to a minus, and that's going to change to a plus. Then what we notice is these two are going to cancel out and we're left with minus 6a squared plus a squared which gives you minus 5a squared. The next uh, step is you bring down the next term which is minus 12a and we start the entire process off again. So we go back to our a up the top and now we're looking at minus 5a squared. What do I multiply a by to get minus 5a squared? You multiply it by minus 5a. Next step is we multiply the minus 5a by both the terms on the outside. That gives you minus 5a squared plus 5a. We change their signs. And these guys cancel and we're left with minus 12a minus 5a, which gives you minus 17a. The next step is we bring down our 17. Then we go back to the start again and we say, what do I multiply a by to get minus 17a? And that's going to be minus 17. We multiply that by both terms outside. So it's minus 17a plus 17. Change both their signs. They all cancel to give us zero. So therefore our answer is up on the top, which is a squared minus 5a minus 17. Okay guys, if you can pause the video now, have a go at this question and then play it to make sure that you got the right answer. So 2x multiplied by what gives me 6x squared? That is going to be 3x. I multiply that by both of these terms, that gives me 6x squared minus 3x. Then I change both of their signs. These cancel and I'm left with 4x bring down my minus 2, start the entire process again. What do I multiply by 2x to get 4x? That's plus 2. Multiply it by both of the other terms, which gives me 4x minus 2. Change both their signs. These guys all cancel to give me 0, so therefore my answer is 3x plus 2. Okay guys, this is the last example I want to show you. This is a slightly trickier version, but once we add in one little thing, it will be back to what we've been doing all along. Remember in the first example I said to you that you need to check that all values of x are represented. If we look up here, we've got an x cubed. What we would expect to come next is an x squared. That's not there. So we need to think about that and then we've got an x and then we've got our number. So x squared is missing. So the one thing that you guys need to remember if this comes up on the junior cert is we have to insert a plus zero x squared in here. The reason why we're doing that is when we deal with, um, with long division, we're always adding the columns together. 
but if you have a column where there's an x and an x squared you can't add them together so by making one of them a zero x squared you'll be able to add the other x squared onto it if that makes sense you'll see how it works now in a second so when i'm writing this into my division sum i write down 6x cubed plus 0x squared minus 15x plus 9 and on the outside I have 3x minus 3 and we start off as we always have we say what do you multiply 3x by to get 3 sorry 6x cubed that's going to be 2x squared we multiply that by both their terms on the outside that gives me 6x cubed minus 6x squared. Change both their signs and as you can see I've got an x squared adding with another x squared that's what I needed to happen there that's going to give me 6x squared bring down my next term and I start the process again. What do I multiply by 3x to get 6x squared that's going to be plus 2x multiply that by both my terms that's 6x squared minus 6x change both their signs so I've got minus 15x plus 6x so that's going to give me minus 9x bring down my next term start it all again what do I multiply 3x by to get minus 9x it's going to be minus 3 multiply those out change both their signs these are both going to cancel because they're all uh, going to equals to zero. So therefore, my answer is 2x squared plus 2x minus 3. So just keep that in mind, guys, that if you have a value of x missing, so whether it be an x cubed squared x, just put it in as zero of that term and everything will work as usual.